morning everybody it's uh friday and it's been almost two weeks since i've posted a video and i apologize for that i've had some uh things arise if you want to call it that that has caused me that i couldn't put some stuff up i have a couple videos done but we're waiting on some stuff to come through at work to finalize uh said things that i was doing the videos on so i'm hoping next week i'll be able to put them back up um but uh in the meantime it has been probably the deadest i've had for demos over the last couple weeks we finished that last one with the uh 1038 and the the 7t over by elmer and we haven't done anything since um it's been very wet uh some guys are sort of picking here and there type of thing to be able to keep moving but people that actually want to demo i'm i'm pretty much done which it's fine, um, but it makes for, for some slow times here for me. Um, some other things that we're facing that I'm sure most farmers are aware of right now, uh, we've got interest rates coming down, but exchange after the uh, election has decided to go crazy on its way up. Um, for Ontario, for Canada, we have to pay an exchange number um, coming from a U.S price on our, our equipment to be able to purchase things and currently right now today we add an extra dollar 42 to the price of anything that we sell here in Canada so it makes things a lot more difficult for people to look at right now um, especially with number one you've got higher prices on equipment number two you've got the exchange rate number three cash crop prices are in the tanks right at the moment there's a few rallies here and there every other couple days type of thing but nothing really crazy but typically what happens is when the exchange rate goes up typically our basis which is a number that sort of helps offset that uh, that exchange rate for uh, customers when they're buying uh, when they're selling their crops sorry um, that typically follows the exchange rate and right now it's not so we've got customers that want to buy equipment and it's expensive but their crop prices are actually not following and not becoming worth more money. So things have sort of fallen flat. So it's gonna make for a uh, very interesting winter here. Um, we have uh, a few customers that are sort of looking at doing some things right at the moment. We're hoping that we can maybe get them to pull the trigger here before the end of the month. Um, the way that Eggco works is they do a monthly exchange rate and uh, it's locked in for the month and then it takes the averages of what the actual exchange rate has fluctuated over the month at and that's what the next month becomes for the exchange rate so we're at a $1.42 today the old exchange rate was a dollar thirty nine fifty seven, I think somewhere in there so I'm predicting we're going to be over a dollar forty next month for December um, for the same piece of equipment that we would sell today versus December 1st so we'll see what happens there. Um, so Friday morning, I dropped my son off at school. Uh, and then uh, I was at a customer's place yesterday, uh, just outside of Park Hill. They're looking at a new tractor for, for next year. And they're sort of looking in that 340 to 350 range. And, uh, a, a, and a friend and a, a really good customer of Advantage is, uh, was in at their elevator the other day. Um, Hugh, thank you very much for your... Uh, your recommendation here um, but uh, he recommended he, we tries he tries this vent out so I went and saw them yesterday um, I took in a 936 um, as an option for one thing but I also brought the thousand series uh, 1038 um, so what they're going to be doing is some tillage uh, manure tanker uh, just some of that sort of stuff and they wanted to see the 1038 so I offered uh, that they could come to the the London store to check it out and they wanted to do that but then I got uh, driving home last night and I'm like you know what I got nothing to do tomorrow after I drop Ben off at school uh, why don't I run it up to you guys and throw it on your tankers we're not going to put it in the field because they're done with everything but it would give them a hands-on driving experience actually pulling what they're going to be pulling um, empty coming back from a tank to get another load type of thing so they could actually play with this tractor so currently right now i just left london i've got about an hour and a half drive to get up to park hill and uh, we're going to get some time to be able to uh, show these guys this tractor and see if this truly is an option for them um, 
it is bigger than what they were originally anticipating buying, but bigger on a manure tanker isn't necessarily always a bad thing. So we're going to see how it fits for them and, and whether they want to look at this or they want to go back down to uh, to looking at a nine. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can't figure something out for these guys. So now that the year is coming to an end here, it seems like majority of people are, are pretty close to being done. Um, lots of farmers typically between now and, and the beginning of the new year will make uh, some moves on some equipment if they haven't done that already. Um, so how about yourselves? Are you, uh, are you making any moves on some new equipment this year? Uh, used tractors, you can combine new tractors, new combines, tillage, planters. Um, what are you doing for your farm this year that uh, is going to be a new improvement for next year? So we're, uh, we're sitting the 21st or 22nd. Let me double check on that. It's the 22nd. Uh, so we're sitting the 22nd of November and just a little bit of a crop update. So I did that last corn demo two weeks ago. And during that period, I would say that probably 90 to 95 percent of people are done um, tillage manure combining washed up parked done um, it went so fast over the last month basically uh, we had such a good rush of rain or <laughs> we had such a good rush of, uh, of good weather and uh, now that the rain started yeah there's a few people still going corn mostly and uh, I would think that they're going to get done here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens there. But, but yeah, um, winter wheat got in nice and early. It looks amazing. You can see just here to my right that uh, this field here um, looks pretty awesome. And then uh, there's one coming up here on the, on the left here too. Wheat got in nice and early. Um, it's got some good growth stage on it. It's not too tall that it's going to have an issue when it overwinters this year. But uh, I think there's going to be some, as long as we don't get any frost heaving or we get a bit of snow just to be able to cover it up, I think we should be good for next year on our wheat crops. So that's a, that's a positive for, for things. Um, there are pockets of poor crop this year. Um, guys will admit that. You get a Tavistock line all the way down through Glencoe. There are pockets in there that, that had a struggle for sure. Um, you get into those pockets and they got things planted and beans were really short but they potted up really nice and they got lots of crop off of it. They were running 50 or 55 bushels of the acre in some of that. So guys were, uh, were pretty happy with that. Um, the corn crop, same thing. Uh, I was in a field that went from 0 to 100 bushels and I've been in other fields that have been 220 to 280. And uh, it, 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 there's a huge variation but I think Overall, uh, based on what we had for weather this summer with all the moisture that we had, uh, poor planting conditions, trying to get things in late, we, uh, we ended up getting uh, much above where we thought they were gonna be uh, for what their yields actually were. So I think most people are pretty happy with that. If we could just get the markets to come up now and, uh, and pay them a bit more, we'd be even better. Well, this thing drives along like Armour Low there. Yep. Like, just Put on the gas, that's the way you go. Well, just had a really good morning with these guys here. They, uh, all got to drive it, dad and the two boys. Um, primary thing that they're looking to do with this tractor is uh, manure tanker. Probably gonna see probably close to 300 hours doing manure with this, with uh, the new quadrain that they've bought. So they're wanting a tractor that's got speed, ease of use, weight, and, and just able to handle that tanker properly. And this 1038, they actually think is a really good option for it. So. Looking forward to seeing where this goes. So now what I've got to do is I've got to go back. Uh, I got about an hour and a half drive back with the tractor and uh, I've got to sit down and start doing some quotes. So they want to do 1038, which is this one, a 
942, which is a smaller frame down, and then a 936, because they're pricing uh, a competitive tractor equivalent to the 936. So, um, so yeah, so that's going to be this afternoon's job. Uh, do some finance quotes and stuff, and uh, hopefully get up first of next week and present that to them so that they can take a look at the numbers and see what we come up with. So, uh, but yeah, they were very, very impressed with the transmission. Uh, very impressed with how smooth the stopping distance, the turning, um, everything you would need in a tractor that's going to sit on a manure tanker to be able to do stuff with. So, so yeah, so I'm going to head back and uh, we'll see where else this, uh, this day goes. It is absolutely pouring down rain right now. It's absolutely disgusting out. So um, probably going to end up having to give this thing a, a bit of a bath when we get home. A little food refreshments. We'll be back with the usual Diet Coke and some Timbits. Strathroy here, so at least I know that there's a parking spot that the tractor will fit into when, uh, when I'm walking or coming through here. It'll be fun getting out of here, I think. But this tractor was absolutely spotless when I left this morning. I washed it, and it is absolutely disgusting now. I'm so frustrated with the fact that the stream came in and all the dirt and everything down. I'm going to have to wash it again when I get back. So yeah, we'll see if we can get out of here without hitting anybody. Well, I just got back from uh, that demo at Park Hill. Um, had a good drive home other than it started to pour rain again on the way back. So the tractor was absolutely covered in road dirt. So gave it a quick rinse, um, started working on some quotes, but today's Friday and I have to pick my son up from school. So I'm just scooting out to, to go grab him. I'll work on some more stuff from home when I get there. Um, yeah, it was a, a bit of a different video here. I apologize about that. I, I will try and get those other two uh, out to you here once um, things are confirmed at work that I can do so um, but we're headed into a slower part of the year uh, most of the field work as I said before is almost done so we're, we're going to be away from the tractor part of things combining doing that stuff so try and find some interesting stuff that uh, that corresponds to what I do this time of the year um, we've just actually booked a, a trip to Texas for next year um, for ideal training so there's going to be some stuff with that. But uh, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It would help the channel out. Um, I'll try and get those other videos out to you here as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.